a very happy Resurrection Day to you all. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I'd like to share with you the Gospel of Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man. He was dressed in a white robe. He was sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. Go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and they fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Apostle Paul reminds us that we are witnesses to what God has done. This comes right out of Acts chapter 10. Like the primary witnesses at the tomb on that first resurrection day, we may have mixed reactions to what God has done. Perhaps the trauma of the moment has us trembling in fear and silence. Perhaps the very idea that the God of all times and places has chosen to reveal himself right before our eyes, in our time, and in our place. And perhaps that's enough to stop us dead in our tracks. I must admit that the fact that God forgives me, the fact that God gives 100% of himself for me, pours himself out, that God still searches me out when I wander on down that pathway and avoid opportunities of service. <laughs> that makes me tremble. Some of the time, other times, I must regrettably confess I'm indifferent. I think we get used to the gospel of Jesus Christ in a not so good way. The good news of Resurrection Day is that God does love us and God conquers death, hell, and the grave to bring us brand new life. When Jesus tore down the prison walls, he rebuilt them, just as he said, in three days. Last week, we celebrated the Philippians passage. It's known as the Christ hymn, where it was echoed that Jesus humbled himself, poured himself out for us in order to bring us into relationship once again with the one who was, who is, and is to come, the everlasting God. My friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day of salvation. We have been set free. How humbling that story is, that we are set free. We are witnesses. And that's a word that I want you to grab a hold of today. We are witnesses to the saving power of Jesus Christ as we are renewed daily in our baptisms. We are called to humble ourselves and die with Christ, and we are raised to new life. Just who are the witnesses to the resurrection? We are. Whether we are prepared to be witnesses or not. I share the good news with you today that God loves you, and God has named you a joint heir 
with Jesus Christ to the throne of God. Jesus Christ, God's only son, that's nothing to take lightly. That's a good news that is not to be taken lightly. The book of Romans tells us that all of creation and its sinfulness moans with labor pains and our passion to be set free. We're in chains. Jesus sets us free and invites us into full participation in that freedom. Who are the witnesses to the resurrection? All of creation. That means people who don't seem like they're worthy to be redeemed. It certainly got Jesus in plenty of trouble as he chose his disciples and chose who to bring to wholeness along the pathway. It cost him his life. In our broken world, sinful humanity builds barriers to keep the least of these, the folks that Jesus talked about in his Gospels, as Jesus would describe folks, today we call them folks on the margins. People, we keep them away from full participation and do in building these walls. In the Gospel News Heralding, Jesus includes people such as the lowly shepherds from the past year. We don't often think about them we think of them as the cute scenes on Christmas Eve. That we include sheep and shepherds. They were lowly people in their day. There were women with unbelievable chronic issues that kept them away from public, kept them away from people. Roman soldiers. Jesus talked to Roman soldiers. They were the enemy. Tax collectors. Something important to say as we approach April 15th, right? Let's move away from the extremes from the first century and into something we can relate to every day in our lives as we are born anew each and every day. Witnesses to the resurrection include you and me. Your neighbor walking out to pick up their wet newspaper as their dog does that little happy dance on the grass next to them. Yes, witnesses to the resurrection. The least likely candidates and their least likely moment of their lives. Jesus has come to bring them new life and they have a story to tell. Do we give them a voice? If John the Baptist, speaking of least likely characters, can walk around in a camel hair kilt while devouring locusts and wild honey, not exactly the cleanest guy in the world, if he can baptize Jesus Christ, trust me, I think a drag queen can certainly tell the story of Jesus Christ and how God has redeemed us all. And here comes the ouch part for me. It's the one that convicts me to the core. Witnesses to the resurrection include the people that we just don't like. You have been around this world sort of the same time that I have been. <laughs> We're all human. We all know that no matter what group you're in, you will find people you just don't like. God calls us to love one another. I don't know whether we're called all the time to like each other. It happens. And the epistles are full of all kinds of instruction about how to deal with the other members of the body of Christ. But there will always be that person. That person. 
And you know the person if you're truly honest with yourself. I certainly can identify those people. Yes, we're in it together. That's the power of the resurrection. That Jesus Christ is the one who has brought us new life. We come up out of that grave together as one body. And we come to the table together as one body. And we hear the words for you. And they are Jesus' words and Jesus' miraculous work. It takes every kind of people to make this world go round, as the song goes. This weekend is Trans Day of Visibility. It's a day where we can help make visible a special group of people who are most often misunderstood in today's society. Trans folks are like everyone else, creations of God, making a pilgrimage in this world. Yes, they probably have a long list of people that they like. They probably have a list of people that they don't like, just like you and me. But they are loved. And they were created in the image of God. And they have hearts to love. Yes, they are witnesses of the resurrection. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I pray that you awaken to new joy today as you join all of creation in singing God's praises. We are in this thing together. I may have shared this story with you before, and it's a much deeper story, but I'll give you the shorter version of it today. I remember my first Holy Week as a brand new Lutheran. It wasn't that long ago. This Baptist-raised boy turned Lutheran had joined the choir at my Lutheran church. And I sat there through the weeks of Lent and through Monday, Thursday and Good Friday. My first night at choir rehearsal, the director pointed at a seat in the front row of the tenor section and he said, your seat is right there between Jean and Joan. These two ladies sang tenor and they were lifelong Lutherans and retired school teachers. Whenever I encountered something new in the liturgy, I leaned over to one of them and asked, what was that all about? And they faithfully explained the theology, the meaning of the liturgical moment on the spot. There was lots of whispering that went on up in that choir loft. For someone who is not used to liturgy, it killed me to bury the Alleluia during Lent. It's funny, we were doing worship services at the county prison and I was playing the piano for those services and I suggested that we sing Alleluia, Alleluia during the quiet time during communion, and I got the meanest look from these staunch Lutherans. We can't sing that during Lent. And I sheepishly shied away. I walked this Lenten road intentionally fasting, intentionally not saying that forbidden word that starts with the A, experiencing the way of the cross, an artistic path that was set up at the church, a way to meditate on the stations of the cross through artwork. I learned what it was like to witness foot, foot washing and the theology behind it. On Monday, Thursday, I rehearsed with the choir late that Thursday night, getting a foretaste of what Sunday's glorifying Worship service would be like excitement was building. We had rehearsed these pieces for a couple months already. 
There was a new way for me to express the joys of what God had done and was doing in this world. Walking those steps through Lent, I was able to see a broader picture of God's work. I started to think of what was going to happen early on resurrection morning, those words that were to be repeated. How would I announce or hear someone announce, Hallelujah, Christ is risen? And I rehearsed how I would react. Christ is risen indeed, Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed, Hallelujah. Christ has risen indeed. Hallelujah. I did not want to mess that line up. Especially since it had hallelujah in it. I got up early on Easter morning. <clears throat> I lived alone at the time. It was a very quiet morning. I had my breakfast. I showered. I had my coffee. Not necessarily in that order. In the solemn moment, I anticipated what this exciting day would bring, and I rehearsed those two lines over and over in my head. I didn't want to get them wrong. I wanted to get it right. I was excited about this new and renewed life in Christ. The choir was singing at both the 8.15 and the 11 o'clock services that day. I was ready to move my feet on out into the sunshine on that bright Easter morning. You could smell spring in the air. I was humming the music to the anthems. The day had come, Resurrection Day. I couldn't wait to share the news with the world. There was anticipation in the air. Who would be the first person to share the news with face to face? Who would be the first witness? Would it be my Catholic neighbor down the sidewalk who faithfully walked her dog in the morning after she prayed the rosary? Would it be my homebound next door neighbor carefully stepping out on the front stoop in her robe to pick up her Sunday paper? Who would I proclaim the news to? I stepped out of my condo. I had my choir folder in hand. I walked over to the car. I was smelling the fragrance of the budding trees. I was listening to the birds singing. <whistles> looking around the neighborhood for that person to share the good news with. I put my key into the car door. And that's when I heard the good news trumpeted through the neighborhood. A cow bird was whistling the most amazing tune. I stopped dead in my tracks. I turned around and I looked up into the tree. I looked at him with as he with all of creation sang praise to God, the creator and God, the redeemer. As was the case on the first Easter morning, all of creation shook with the good news. He whistled the news that God is alive. Christ the Lord is risen, alleluia, I believe was his song. I smiled from ear to ear. There was a relaxing of the muscles in my shoulders and in my neck. All that rehearsing I had done. I slowly turned around and I faced that instrument of God's peace up in that tree. And I said, you bet he has. Jesus is alive. Let's live that out together. Amen.